Timing, specifically the order in which things happen, is surprisingly important in Unity. This is because most unexpected errors, as in something that was working but now isn't, or something that usually works but sometimes doesn't, are almost always to do with changes in timing. This happens because while there are some asynchronous operations, generally speaking Unity operates on a single thread, meaning that two things cannot happen at the same time, one thing will always be processed first, while something else must be processed second. But what comes first? The logical order of events in your game is determined by three main factors. Unity's event execution order, instance-based ordering, and function-based chains of execution. Event execution order refers to the built-in methods that are triggered by Unity on mono-behavior objects such as start, update, fix update, and collision functions. These are triggered in a specific order, determined by Unity's event function execution order, and together they make up the life cycle of a frame. For example, you probably already know that update is called every frame, while late update is always called after update. Yield, which is the process of suspending and interrupting a coroutine, happens just after update does. This refers to actually yielding a coroutine. The code contained within a coroutine before it's yielded will run whenever it's called, just like any other function would. It's only when the function is suspended that it's processed in the yield event message. Fixed update, which is the physics system update call, will always take place before update, and may be called once, more than once, or not at all. This is because fixed update calls are triggered at a different rate to frame updates, at 50 frames per second by default, while frame rate is generally variable. But while fixed update does run at a different rate, it's not asynchronous. Instead, fixed time is compared to delta time, which is the duration of the last frame, and fixed update is called enough times to keep up. This all happens within fixed update, meaning that even if multiple calls are required, they all happen here, before update, after which fixed update won't be called again until the next frame. Collision events such as on trigger enter, exit and stay, and on collision enter, exit and stay, happen next and are called when a valid collision of that type has occurred. For this to work, at least one of the colliders involved must also have a rigid body attached, which is the component that allows an object to move under physics, and when using on trigger, one of the colliders must be a trigger collider. Finally, after the physics functions have ended, input events are called before the frame's update loops begin. Lifecycle events such as awake, on enable and start are called when a script is first loaded, anytime it's enabled, and the first time it's enabled. Awake and start are commonly used as two-stage first-time initialization methods, and you typically want to use awake to set up an object relative to itself, while start is commonly used to set up an object with other objects. An example of this would be a class that gets a reference to one of its own components in awake, so that when another script tries to use that reference in start, it's definitely already been set up, avoiding an error. On enable is typically used with on disable to activate or deactivate parts of the script or object when it's turned on and off, such as when subscribing to events, for example. They're also called when the object is created and when it's destroyed, at which point on destroy is also called at the end of an object's life and after all other event functions. It can help to think of this order as something that Unity dictates, not something that happens independently on an object. So Unity calls all of the starts for all of the scripts in the scene, and then calls all of the updates, and then calls all of the late updates, and so on, where each event function is called in every script on every object before moving on to the next. The exception is awake and on enable, which are called in order, but as a pair on a per script basis. This means that awake and then on enable are called in one script, and then they are both called in a different script and so on for all of the objects in your scene. While the event execution order is set, this order, the order in which scripts will have their event functions called, is not, it's random. So how can you know which script instances will have their events called first? The short answer is that you can't. The longer answer is that while you can control script specific execution order 
it's generally better not to, at least most of the time. The order in which scripts are executed can't be predicted, and while it's usually the same in a single project or on a single machine, loading the project elsewhere or building the game typically results in a different order. This is why so many seemingly unexplained errors can appear when you build the game for the first time, since a change in order may mean that a previously undetected timing issue may now cause a problem. It's possible to force certain scripts to have their functions prioritized over other classes by adding them to the script execution order, which allows you to wait a class so that it's executed before or after others. However, ideally, this should only be used as a last resort for very important, time-sensitive scripts. It also only works at a class level, meaning that a particular type of script will have its functions called before others do, but the instances of that script will still be random. It can't even be guaranteed that all of the object's scripts will be called together, which is why staging logic into event functions that are always separate can be useful for avoiding timing issues. However, this won't always be possible, and for closely linked logic, it can be better to chain dependent logic together to create an order of events that's linked to function execution. Function execution refers to the flow of logic that happens when a function is called. If it helps, you can think of this as Unity's train of thought. For example, when a function is called, its statements are executed line by line from top to bottom in order. If one of those statements calls a function, then the flow of execution moves to that method immediately, finishing it before returning to its own function to carry on. This could happen multiple times over, where functions are essentially chained together directly. This can be useful for controlling the flow of logic without breaking it, which can be a good way to avoid errors that might be otherwise introduced in the gap between ending one function and starting another. But why is this important? A real-life example of this causing a problem was in an early version of my hobby project, which involved moving objects around on a grid. The player could hold an object and put it down, but only if it was in a valid position. The objects would manage their own status, updating whether or not their position allowed them to be put down, which at the time made sense. But because the function that caused the object to change its position and the function that checked if it was correct were separate, it was possible for the object to report that it could be put down before the player moved it. As you now know, this is because the order of update calls on both objects could not be guaranteed, and without changing one of the script's execution order, there's no way to know which would be called first. This meant that the object could be placed in an incorrect position if the player happened to move it from a correct one and tried to put it down within the same frame. The solution to this is to chain the logic together so that it's all triggered from a single call. In this case, player input. The object no longer uses update to check if it's in a valid position. Instead, it holds a public function that returns a boolean and that's called when trying to put the object down. Generally, this is how a lot of functions in your game are likely to work. They'll be triggered by a limited number of events, such as player input, the passing of time, or something that an enemy does that causes a chain of logic to start and understanding this can help you to avoid timing-related problems. As a general rule of thumb, when writing a behavior, consider what trigger will cause it to happen and how the timing of that trigger could affect it. Then, either directly link the behavior to the trigger that will cause it, such as an input that executes a chain of events, or stage it in a way that means passive functions that are dependent on other events but that are not directly linked, such as, say, camera movement that responds to player movement, takes place in a different event function, such as late update, for example. This video is part of the Beginner Basics module in my online course, How to Code in Unity. For more information, or to enroll on the course for yourself, see the link in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.